Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to this, the Wheat Ridge Presbyterian Church worship service for December 20th, 2020. This is the fourth Sunday in Advent and the theme is love. And my name is Laura Sugg, I'm the pastor here. And a theme we're exploring all through Advent, Christmas and through Epiphany is those who dream. And today we're thinking about those who dream are not alone. I hope you read the announcement slide. There's a lot of information there. Just a reminder that the Christmas Eve worship service for Wheat Ridge Presbyterian Church will be posted on the uh, Wheat Ridge Presbyterian Church Facebook page at 3.30 on Christmas Eve, which is of course Thursday the 24th. And then it will be available if you would like to watch it at 11 p.m. or even around midnight uh, to lead you in to Christmas morning. Uh, it will be there for you to watch and enjoy and do take a moment and let the church know that you were there. If you have a Facebook account, you can comment uh, and let us know you were there. Donations are always welcome, especially at the end of the year uh, when some folks give some extra giving. So thank you for that. And today, fellowship time will follow on Zoom. Use the link in the email. On Christmas Eve, we won't have fellowship time together because people will very likely be watching it at different times. So let us join in the call to worship. I knew joy, but when I heard the laugh of my child, suddenly joy was overflowing. I knew love, but when you held my hand, suddenly love was overflowing. I knew God, but when you showed me grace, when you forgave me, when you loved me, when you raised me, suddenly God was overflowing. So let us worship holy God together as a reminder that God is here and we are never alone. This is community. This is the body of Christ. Welcome home. I dream of music that makes my heart swell. I dream of trees that take my breath away. I dream of sunrises that wrap me in light. I dream of family dinners that feel like home. I dream of church services that give me hope. I dream of love as the default. So today, as we draw near to Christmas Day, we light the candle of love. May this light burn bright as a reminder that God is here and God is love. We are not alone. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. Let us join in the prayer for renewal, trusting in God's boundless love. Let us pray. God of good news, you say to me, you are highly favored, but I struggle to see how that could be. You say to me, do not be afraid, but I am afraid all of the time. You say to me, even the impossible is possible. Just look at Elizabeth. But hope slips through my hands like water. The impossible still feels impossible. So today I pray. Today we pray. Teach us to sing like Mary. Teach us to laugh like Elizabeth. Teach us to trust like the angels. Forgive us when we can only do one at a time or none at all. Amen. Beloveds, God's love is everlasting. God's mercy is boundless. The new life we have in Christ enables us to share the good news that no one is alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let's enjoy singing together. It came upon a midnight clear and the words will appear on the screen. Let us sing to God.
let us join in the prayer for illumination, the words of which you will see on your screen. Holy God, before you could speak, you were speaking, leaping in wombs, kicking, stretching, jumping for joy. You have always found a way to show up in our midst, particularly on our fearful or lonely days. So today, as we crack open our Bibles, fluttering through these old beloved pages, we ask that you would move again. Stir in us. Speak to us. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. And if we are not able to hear your word clearly, then give us Elizabeth's, who will point out your presence in delight and joy. Before you could speak, you were speaking. So here and now, Creator God, we are listening. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 89, verses 1 through the first part of verse 6. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Here ends the first reading. And our second reading will probably be familiar to most of us. Uh, it's Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 45. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged, engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has, conceived, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for, who, for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she encountered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? 
For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. This is, as I've said already in worship, the theme of the fourth Sunday in Advent is love, and what a beautiful theme to explore this morning. Psalm 89, I won't go into detail, but uh, like many Psalms and other passages in the Old Testament especially, speaks of God's steadfast love. This is a, a one word in Hebrew, two words in English that uh, is repeated so often. It's not just a kind of emotional, warm, fuzzy love. It is a love that is steadfast and true and lived in the experience of people. So this is, uh, again, not a theological or theoretical idea of love, but it's a lived experience for people that it's forged. It's forged through human connection as well as trusting in God and the experience of God's uh, sustaining presence in one's own life and the life of the people. And of course, that blessed assurance that we're exploring today that we are not alone. So last week, we read the Magnificat, that theme of the third week of uh, Sunday of Advent is joy. And so the long tradition is that the Magnificat is read uh, even though it follows the passage we read today. So it was read last week because the theme was joy, and this week is love. And we hear not only about the Annunciation, Mary learning that she's going to uh, give birth to the Savior, but also that she goes to see Elizabeth, her elderly or older cousin who has been barren for years and yet through God's miraculous power is also going to give birth to, we knew uh, through scripture that that's John the Baptist. So she sang this amazing song, Mary Magnificat's, uh, the Magnificat, about God sticking up for people that the world wants to push aside. So she says that, sings that after she gets reassured by her cousin. Shannon Kirshner, who is pastor of Fourth Presbyterian Church in Chicago, wrote that it was Elizabeth's confidence and welcome of Mary that helped Mary turn from all the oh no all the oh no's in her life, uh, being young, uh, probably pretty poor, pregnant before the wedding was official. Uh, she was betrothed, but she was not yet wed. Uh, visits from angelic messengers, all those oh no situations faded when Elizabeth reminded uh, Mary that it, she was indeed favored, a favored one of God. So I couldn't help but think about our confirmands, these four young people who were confirmed last Sunday, but you'll see that cer ceremony in just a few minutes, and their mentors uh, who were uh, people in the church, longstanding members of this church, who were building a connection with these young people through the confirmation class that Linda Vallo led. And uh, it was such a lovely experience, again, different because it was on Zoom instead of here in person. But when we gather in person, we will definitely celebrate our confirmation class um, and their uh, wonderful mentors. But I did think of them, these mentors, giving wise advice, giving confidence to some of these young folks who were confirmed. Um, and as they try to sort out who they are, they're again, probably Mary's age, uh, when Mary uh, was visited by the angel telling her that she would give birth. So uh, the mentors and all of us try to share with young people, children, everyone, that uh, as they discern who they are and how God's love is present in their life, that they have friends on that journey, uh, like Elizabeth was to Mary. I also, if you know me very well, you know that I love uh, Broadway 
uh, shows and one of my favorites is Dear Evan Hansen. It's a more recent one, came out, I guess, within the past six or seven years. And um, Ben Blatt is, uh, was made famous as the star of that show, the title character. And there's a song that is just so beautiful. And I will share the link, the YouTube video link, uh, so that if you want to watch, it, it's not a video of them singing, it's the audio, uh, but it's the official site. And this one's called You Will Be Found. And it starts off very quietly with just Evan Hansen, Ben Blatt's character saying, have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear, like you could fall and no one would hear? Evan Hansen is a teenager in high school, uh, so his character is quite lonely. And then he continues, even when the dark comes crashing through, when you need a friend to carry you, and when you're broken on the ground, you will be found. And then the song builds and builds, as many Broadway show songs do, with the chorus coming in, saying, out of the shadows, the morning is breaking, and all is new, all is new. It's filling up the empty. And suddenly I see that all is new, all is new. And then it repeats so many times, I won't say all of them, but it says, you are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. So I couldn't help but think of that beautiful, beautiful song. And I hope uh, if you do listen to it for the first time that you find it as meaningful as I have. So um, I felt like this theme of love, you are not alone, is so fitting for this time of pandemic as well. All of us have been either uh, isolating as much as we can at home, uh, connecting as we can using technology and the rare outdoor, uh, you know, encounter with masks or quarantining and gathering with just a few folks. Uh, so this is a time when many of us do feel alone and the message that we are not alone and that God's love uh, is coming to us in the form of a beautiful baby boy uh, born in Bethlehem is one that we can all hold on to. So that's for Thursday. But in the meantime, uh, just know that this message of God's ultimate, you are not alone to each of us in all the world, that Emmanuel, God with us, is coming. And that in the meantime, we remember Mary and Elizabeth and the way that um, Elizabeth's wisdom and confidence and joy uh, around Mary helped her let go of the oh no's and remember that she is indeed a favored one. So the church at its best does this for its members, of course, but also for its community, for its uh, broader community across the nation and of course across all borders of nation, class and race that we all can tell each other, you are not alone. Thanks be to God, amen. Grace and peace to all. This is an exciting day in the life of Wheat Ridge Presbyterian Church. We are welcoming four young people into the membership of the congregation. They have always been a part of the household of God's love, but today they profess their faith and join this congregation as confirmed members. Since this video will be online, we're not using last names, but the four young people are Elliot and Landon, Annika and Naomi. And we're very excited that they're ready to be here. Many thanks to Linda Vallow, our Director of Christian Education for her leadership in the confirmation process. She'll now share a little bit about that process and then also present uh, the confirmands on behalf of the session. Linda? Thank you. Our first confirmation class was held in person in February, and then we had to continue and complete our classes online. We are so grateful for the church members who are serving as mentors, Gay Cuthel, Jim Niquette, Dick Remington, and Joy and Don Tolan. Elliot, Landon, Annika, and Naomi are presented by the session 
for the reaffirmation, reaffirmation of the baptismal covenant. They now desire to profess their faith publicly and to accept a greater responsibility in the life of the church and God's mission in the world. We rejoice that you now desire to declare your faith and to share with us in our common ministry. In baptism, you were joined to Christ and made members of his body. In the community of the people of God, you have learned of God's purpose for you and for all of creation. You have been nurtured at the table of our Lord and called to witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Linda? You are citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. So now these questions for our confirmands. Uh, if all of you can just answer as you're able and the Zoom sound may be a little different, but it'll all be good. So trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, say, I do. I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? I will. Will you devote yourself to the church's teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers? Will you? I will. I will. Let us pray. Gracious God, by water and the spirit, you claimed us as your own, cleansing us from sin and giving us new life. You made us members of your body, the church, calling us to be your servants in the world. Renew Elliot, Landon, Annika, and Naomi in the covenant that you made in their baptism. Continue the good work you have begun in them. Send them forth by the power of your spirit to love and serve you with joy and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh, amen. At this point in the service, normally uh, the confirmands would kneel in the front of the sanctuary. Their sponsors uh, and their parents would be there to lay on hands, uh, putting hands on a shoulder or a head. Uh, obviously, we're going to do that a little differently. I've invited uh, the parents to lay on their hands, and I now invite you to do what uh, Dick Remington was just doing, which is extend your hands, if you would, adults, in a gesture of blessing. And let us pray. O oh Lord, uphold Elliot, Landon, Annika, and Naomi by your spirit. Daily increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And now one by one, I'll uh, say a little prayer for each of you. Elliot, remember your baptism and be thankful and know that the Holy Spirit is at work in you. Landon, remember your baptism and be thankful and know that the Holy Spirit is at work within you. Annika, remember your baptism and be thankful and know that the Holy Spirit is at work within you. And Naomi, remember your baptism and be thankful and know that the Holy Spirit is at work within you. If we can all say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Be to God. Welcome to Naomi, Annika, Landon, and Elliot. By professing your faith publicly, you have expressed your intention to grow in the covenant of God that God made with you in your baptism. May the spirit continue to strengthen and sustain you in the worship and mission of the church. Alleluia, amen. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. 
Take care, everyone. Peace. And this is just such a wonderful day. When we are gathering in person, we will definitely have a cake for you and everyone can give you hugs. In the meantime, I'm sure that some folks will express their congratulations and good wishes uh, in the future. Blessings. Comfort, comfort now, my people. Tell of peace, so says our God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, mourning under sorrow's load. To my people now proclaim that my pardon waits for them. Tell them that their sins I cover and their warfare now is over. For the herald's voice is crying in the desert far and near, calling us to true repentance since the reign of God is here. Oh, that warning cry obey, now prepare for God away. Let the valleys rise in meeting and the hills bow down in greeting. Straight shall be long was crooked and the rougher places plain. Let your hearts be true and humble as befits God's holy reign. For the glory of the Lord now on earth is shed abroad and all flesh shall see the token that God's word is never Thanks be to God for special music and for Julie and Katie and the ways in which they enrich our worship. As we come before God in prayer, I highlight a few folks from the congregation. Alan H. had to spend last Sunday night in the hospital because he passed out at home. He was not injured, not even a bruise, he says. Uh, but And he feels fine now, but he did pass out and the doctors after sometime ruled out other options and it's probably low blood pressure and getting up too quickly. So he says he's feeling fine, but of course it was frightening for Sonia and for Valerie who was helping uh, Sonia out. Uh, so let's uh, continue to hold Alan, Sonia and Valerie in our prayers. We also give huge prayers of thanksgiving for our four young people who were confirmed uh, in today's worship service. We recorded it last Sunday and you saw it in today's service. So we give thanks for Annika, for Naomi, for Landon and Elliot and for their church mentors who are continuing to be in relationship with them uh, in special ways of um, showing the church's love and concern. And uh, we also give thanks for all of you who will continue to support not only these four confirmands, but all the young people in our church, the children, little guys, all the way up uh, through young adults and the ways in which we can learn from them, as well as share our own experience like Elizabeth shared with Mary. We pray for Shirley, uh, who is, uh, again, as I record this uh, worship service still, under care of hospice and under the care of loving Virgil. So prayers continue for her. For our leaders in Washington, D.C., um, hopefully by the time we're watching this on Sunday morning, we will have heard of a relief package, economic relief for individuals, businesses, renters, mortgage uh, payments, as well as lenders and the efforts to get the vaccine distributed. So prayers for that process. And as we move towards uh, Christmas Eve on Thursday, we pray for all people that they might know that they are not alone, uh, especially if they're dealing with addiction or isolation, that we as a church, as individuals can reach out in love and show God's love in the world, even during a pandemic. So let us pray. Loving God, God of boundless love, we know that you are always present with us, showing your love in real and concrete ways, either in prayer, in the movement of our lives, or through people like Elizabeth to Mary, giving confidence that, yes, we are not alone. 
We pray for people who do not feel that, especially uh, this time of year when it can feel lonely, especially during the pandemic. We pray for all people dealing with addictions of any kind that lead them not to a feeling of being close to you and to others, but to feeling more and more isolated. We pray for our nation and for the world as the vaccine becomes distributed, that all who need it will get it early and quickly, and those of us who can wait will wait, but that uh, in whatever due time, that we will be at a place where we are post-pandemic and we can resume gathering in joyful celebration for worship and for meals. We pray for our confirmands and for their journey of faith that we might all be helpful to them. And now we pray before you a prayer of our own heart, whether it's about ourselves, the world, or someone we know closely that needs your love. And loving God, as your children, we come before you in love, trusting your love, and praying as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us enjoy singing along as Katie Sack and I, our music director, helps us singing Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming. And the lyrics again will be on your screen. Let us sing. confidence of Elizabeth, the trusting heart of Mary, let us join in the closing sentences of affirmation. We believe that this world is hard, harder than it has to be. When the world falls apart around us, we believe in listening for angels that say, do not be afraid, and in seeking out the Elizabeths in our lives those who laugh with joy at our arrival and throw open the doors to their homes. We believe that healthy relationships can offer healing through the laughter of cousins, the joy shared between siblings, and the home found in partnership. Therefore, we believe in church families, in chosen families and in the love that extends beyond family. We believe in friendships, in neighbors, and in leaning on each other 
when the going gets tough. We believe in the triune God, lover, beloved, and love itself, inherently relational, always connected, and never alone. We believe that same belovedness exists for us. We believe that we are loved and claimed never alone. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Beloveds, as we journey to Bethlehem this week, may you experience the reality of never being alone, the reality of God's love, which is unshakable. And may this triune God's love sustain you now and evermore. Amen. Thank you.